this video, as the title states, we're going to look at pistol sight options. Now, I've grown as a shooter. I've learned some things. I, in the past, I parroted what other people said because I thought, oh, it's such common knowledge, you know, whatever. But that's a failing in this current environment because people are just taking what they hear and they're treating it like it came directly from God. So, you know, like the 45 is going to knock somebody down, pick them up and knock them on their butt, you know. Uh, or 9 millimeters, you know, still a sufficient caliber or whatever. <laughs> okay. But just because it's common, uh, common quote unquote knowledge in the gun community doesn't make it true, or 9 millimeters just as good as other calibers or whatever, well, my fist is just as good as a sledgehammer. But, anyways, so when we're looking at sight options for pistols, there's a few things that we need to keep in mind. Um, what are sights for? On pistols, really, they are very crude. However, the emphasis for a lot of people that are shooting is getting precision. Usually, these things were designed for close quarters, emergency usage, concealed carry, and use on the battlefield or just at the range. So, you know, you may be using it in competition where you need to exercise more precision or on the battlefield it's up close and it's, it may be hard to miss at your, the certain ranges. However, the sights, giving a good reference, will put the rounds where they need to be in order to stop the threat. Given that the ammunition does what it should do, which is, you know, going through the body and staying on course without alter, altering its trajectory before hitting the vital organs. That's actually a big failing of the 9mm and some of the uh, more... I guess you could say, you know, exotic ammunitions. Uh, if you do any looking into uh, stuff that's happened, uh, you know, ballistics and stuff like that, terminal effects on actual threats, you'll see that they don't always, you know, behave like you would like them to. So, <clears throat> anyways, with that aside, pistol sights are basically references. It's not going to be completely accurate out to long range. It's really hard to basically know how these heavy, small bullets, or heavy, bigger bullets and rifles uh, typically, but how these big bullets, big heavy bullets with such a small powder charge are going to be so consistent, you're going to be hitting accurately all the time, but usually they're more accurate than you, so you get your sights on and you keep them on while you're pulling the trigger, you should be good to go. However, one of the big things for sights is they need to be able to um, give you the ability to make accurate hits, i.e. that uh, you're able to line up your sights and reference them to the target and actually have, be able to have more precision, be able to see the target and be able to get an exact idea of where they're going to hit if you're looking for precision. When you're doing like combat shooting, I would say that the sights actually being easy to pick up and as long as they're somewhere referenced on the target and somewhere in the rear the rear sight notch then you should be good to go now uh, there's a couple categories that I listed um, visibility and you know they also need to be uh, durable as well and also the price also comes into account so here's the reason why uh, some of these side options are better than others when you're looking at all environments and you're looking at what you can actually use these sites for, uh, some of them are a little, I, I would say that the idea behind their usage is more or less mm, centered in, you know, myth and uh, stuff that really isn't going to help you out much if you ever have to use your firearm. So <clears throat> we'll touch into that, but we're going to be focusing on stock sights versus you know using something like a modification like nail polish right here as you see this has like a pinkish you know high visibility uh, nail polish for quick acquisition of the front sight and also factory night sight that glow and you know this could even cover fiber optics because that's actually a pretty popular uh, option for a lot of people so First thing I want to start out with is the stock sites. Now, this is one of the problems with stock sites. Um, first off, the price, you get it with a gun. Even Glock sites are polymer, but that is a problem. The durability of them kind of can suck depending on how you're using them. 
like these ones these are polymer and they can be chipped off you know relatively easily depending on how you're using them but you know they can get chipped up a little bit but also the rear sights very hard to pick up but I, I don't really notice that as being too big of a deal as long as the front side is very well pronounced which in this case it isn't it has a very nice open rear notch which a lot of people don't like because they're like oh it has too much air on each side well you know learn to shoot learn to actually put equal air on uh, each side and you know you should be good to go and there is a philosophy that I've heard from a very good shooter and a very good instructor who said keep the front sight in or keep the front sight thin and you're in <clears throat> now the CCP is not actually the perfect gun for everybody to be in a single stack it's very ergonomic and everything it has a manual safety which people don't really uh, care for you don't really have sight options um, <clears throat> although you can use nail pulse to give it a high visibility you don't have night sight options or even fiber optics um, also this thing has been finicky on reliability as far as the M1 is concerned the M2 uh, is supposed to have more promise I don't have any experience with this this is one of the originals uh, however it is a very cool firearm and it works incredibly well uh, when it's working <laughs> so anyways that's just a little you know little ramble on you know the this pistol but as you can see with the stock sights it's not always going to give you the best options that you would like and also I'm going to pull up a Turkish pistol here <clears throat> this is a SAR CM9 Gen 2 it has adjustable sights I took Gorilla Glue to keep this thing from moving because the stock sights um, were moving over a little bit and moved over to here and actually this aligned the sights perfectly to be able to hit right on you see the front sight is actually pretty uh, pretty big and it's not uh, too concave to where you know fouling is going to be able to stick in there and I'm not going to be able to clean it out however it is kind of dirty right now so that can be a problem so uh, with the rear sights you know the notch basically tightens up the sights to where you know you have to be more precise however being that it has a shorter barrel shorter sight radius you do have to kind of be precise with this because little variations can throw you off however I think that this thing would benefit from nail polish they don't have any aftermarket sight options so I think nail polish is a good replacement for fiber optics if they don't have sight options and it doesn't really kill you too much a lot of people like night sights but let me go ahead and uh, just touch on night sights real quick while I put this away so night sights on a military pistol typically that's like the old Navy SEAL you know uh, type thing where they're in the jungles of Vietnam old SOG thing where they know they're only surrounded by enemies and they can see the silhouette and they can get a center of mass hit but they don't necessarily need a uh, positive identification on their threat because guess what everybody is hostile and they know the only people that are going through the jungle the silhouette of an AK or something like that they know that all they need to do is reference their sights and put rounds down right so I think that's really the big thing there when they're running lights out <clears throat> or running with night vision it makes it a little bit easier however uh, in low light training you'll see that the night sights don't do you very good and low light training is very good because it teaches you one important aspect that you always need to have under the under law you need to have positive identification and if you are operating in the dark you don't actually have positive identification you just have assumptions and that will get you in trouble uh, from what I know and so anyways um, night sights not really necessary though there are some good sight options that give you kind of like a fiber optic uh, front or a glowing front and glowing rears and some people might just like night sights they say it's really good for home defense I would say that a, a weapon mounted light would be more essential or just having a light and then when you're using it it washes out the night sights so I don't really think night sights are too useful I would say fiber optics are probably more useful and I think um, a blacked out rear with a front fiber optic would actually be more beneficial <clears throat> so here is an example of a modified um, pistol this is the gear sombre guard a Breton 92 clone one of my favorites and very smooth very well built Turkish knows how to build firearms 
And this is the type of pistol that they've been using in military service. I believe it is getting replaced. However, this is a pretty interesting system. It's basically designed after the Brighton 92F. And, uh, you know, I believe it you know, shares some of the shortcomings, but they made some modifications to add life to it. And uh, this is obviously the railed version. However, um, they don't have night sight options because obviously they're taken after the design where it's a fixed sight however the rear sights are just good enough if anybody's ever fired a 92 they know that they can be shot very accurately uh, these are all obviously mechanically accurate however that doesn't make you accurate because if you can't pull the trigger without moving the gun then you're not going to be able to make that hit and it doesn't matter how well you're aiming or how accurate the gun is so anyways <clears throat> this allows me to actually pick up the sight a lot better because this actually this front sight as you can see this hole here um, it's actually pretty deep so the problem I was encountering with this is that um, Fouling was getting their uh, firing residue that was coming out was actually crowding this and actually making the white dot harder to see and even with you know, having the white dot out there, it's actually pretty hard to reference where the whole sight is. So painting the whole front sight from top to bottom actually gives me a better reference point. Very quick to identify because this contracts again, contrasts against almost every, uh, every background that I could be shooting at. So I really appreciate how highly visible this is. This is kind of like a pink fuchsia, you know, <clears throat> Uh, kind of hot pink, but it contrasts against every environment. I wouldn't go with green. I wouldn't go with yellow. Uh, they contrast against different environments. I would say this is pretty much perfect. It's kind of a little girly, but you know what? This actually is um, pretty amazing how well it works. I used a nail polish on another CCP, and it enhanced the performance a lot better. So if I don't see something that I'm willing to spend a lot of money on in order to get a fiber optic front or something like that, given that fiber optics typically can be a little less durable than just throwing some nail polish on stock sites or, you know, whatever, uh, they can pop out depending on your warranty. Um, you know, I'd be a little skeptical, but um, I would rather just do like a quick nail polish job. Um, that's probably going to be the fate of this SAR CM9 Gen 2. I like this front sight, however, it would make it very easy to acquire if I didn't have to do that fine science where the white can actually blend in with certain, you know, backgrounds such as, you know, high sun glare, uh, having a lot of glare from the sun, it can actually look the same, but when it's not enough glare to wash out this sight. So, you know, there's just some things to consider here and uh, in my opinion, I think uh, that getting a little nail polish and putting it on the front sight is actually a better idea. Um, even taking a marker on the rear sight, as you can see, this is the Lionheart LH9, one of the m most tested pistols on the channel, uh, and the thing is still running very strong, and it's an amazing pistol, but as you see, I did... Um, I did have some polish on here, but it kind of scraped off a little bit. The beauty is that you know, for five bucks or something like that, you can get a very high quality polish um, that will make your girlfriend happy and you can sneak it away to go ahead and take care of your pistol collection. And I also blacked out the rears. This originally came with a three dot uh, sighting system. I wasn't a fan of how tiny these rear sights, um, rear dots were. And I just did not like how hard it was to acquire these small sights. It's also a problem that I've seen with uh, certain pistols like CZs. So <clears throat> there's little considerations that I've had to have here and there, but it seems like nail polish has always uh, helped me in every aspect. It gives me a high visibility. I'm able to see equal air. It um, highly announces the top of the front side because the big thing is that it's aligned at the top and on the sides, equal air on both sides and flush at the top. So, you know, with all that in mind, I would say that nail polish would probably be a good advantage. Fiber optics are good, but it's still only a, a circle of a certain size. It only works during, um, you know, certain times when the sun's shining for the most part. Photoluminescent sites are fine, but with nail polish, you're able to basically paint it the whole site. And, you know, you can just repaint it, wipe off any of the crap, and it should stick around for quite a while. 
So anyways, go ahead and leave some comments below. I know everybody's going to have an opinion, and that's and that's great. Um, let people decide for themselves. Provide, you know, your experience, your evidence, and, you know, what you think. And let people decide for themselves who, who might be, you know, thinking more in line with their needs. So anyways, you guys have a good one. Leave a comment. Please subscribe.